Last week, last week, I got a letter from a, a woman named Christina in San Antonio, Texas, where Southern Baptist Sissies played. And she had been fired by the Baptist a week before the show opened after nine years of employment for being a lesbian. Isn't that Christian? <laughs> yeah. But she said, the play was healing. The play healed me. And that's the word I kept getting in almost every single letter that came to me, the word healing. We ran for over a year at the Zephyr Theater, and we won the GLAAD Award. We won a lot of theater awards. But then we decided that we were going to take the play and drop it in to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> the buckle of the Bible Belt. Oh, we had controversy. We, we knew we were going to have controversy because we had this poster. I don't know if y'all remember the poster, but the poster had beautiful Robert Louis Stevenson on a cross in a Speedo. And the Baptists got mad. They got so upset. We couldn't keep this poster up in Dallas. The gay boys would steal it and the Baptists would rip it down. <laughs> We thought we were going to get protesters, but Leslie Jordan said, Honey, people, the Baptists don't protest in July. It's just too hot. <laughs> um, but um, the, 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 the Dallas Morning News would not let us advertise with that poster, but they picked up on the controversy of the poster, and on, in the Sunday religious section, they wrote an article, and they interviewed all of the clergy, and they were mad. They were saying, oh, he's desecrated the symbol of the Lord and the, you know, the Christianity, the cross and all this. And I responded by saying, oh, I didn't realize that you had a trademark on the cross. I, you know what? It's my cross, too, and I choose to make it a symbol for the gay community, how they've been persecuted by the churches. All right, that didn't go over so well, but... <laughs> Channel 5 picked up on, I think it was the NBC affiliate, and they did a segment on the news. And I think the producer was on my side because they cut it in a way where they interviewed this wiry little Southern Baptist preacher who looked a lot like a rodent. And he was, and he said, if, if you go to this place, Southern Baptist disease, you will commit blasphemy and burn in hell. <laughs> like veins were popping. And then they cut to me. And I'm on the church set of the, of the play in like warm furniture like this, very nice lighting. And I said, well, unlike the, um, the hatred that is being spewed from the pulpits across America, my play is about love and acceptance for everybody. The segment ran and we sold out in three hours. <laughs> Not... I couldn't get tickets for my friends. I mean, it was completely sold out with no reviews. We got great reviews, and it was a wonderful run there. <sighs> so one, one afternoon, I walked out of the Mac Theater, the McKinney, uh, McKinney Contemporary Avenue Theater, and I walked out, and I saw this beautiful boy crying. Now, I'm not talking about just crying, crying. He was sobbing. So I went over to him, and I introduced myself, and I said, are you okay? And he said, Mr. Shores, your play may be great for those who have gone through the fire, but if you're going through the fire, it's really hard to watch. And he told me a story. His name was Michael. He's 23 years old. He had been married, and he was going to Southwestern Theological Seminary in Fort Worth to become a preacher. His dad was a Southern Baptist preacher. And he had an affair with a man. His wife found out. She exposed the affair. And he was excommunicated from the church. He was thrown out of the seminary. She left him. And his response was to take a bottle of Ambien and try to kill himself. The day that he came to see Southern Baptist sissies, he was in a psych ward at the hospital, and they released him for the day. A, some gay mentor got him to come to the play, which I don't think was a great idea. I mean, you know, the play has a suicide in it and all of that. 
But I gave him a hug, and I quoted the line that Leslie Jordan said as Peanut. I said, Michael, I want you to go home, and I want you to look in the mirror and somehow learn to love what you see. We exchanged emails a couple of times, and I lost track of him. In 2006, we revived Southern Baptist Sissies. It was a hit again at the Zephyr. And one Sunday matinee, I walk out, and there is this beautiful man in a black suit. And he strides up to me very confidently, and he said, Mr. Shores, I don't know if you remember me, but my name is Michael. And I met you, and I go, oh, my God, yes, I do remember you. How are you? And he said, the day I saw Southern Baptist Sissies at the Mac Theater, I decided to be Mark and not Andrew. He decided to be Mark, the storyteller, the hero, instead of Andrew, the boy that killed himself. 